Hi, I'm Lou, another episode of My Car Story. I'm here with Terry. Terry, what's your last name? Terry Pisha. Pisha, thank you. Let me grab the camera as I usually do. Thank you so much, Connie. And Terry, what, uh, what did you bring here with us today? It's a 1936 Cord 810 Phaeton. Come with me. Four, I'm four trying passenger. to get it all in there. Four passenger convertible. And, you know, this was a car before its time. Absolutely. I mean, uh, the styling, the, the, the look of the front of it, um, you know, the, the Cars movie has this in the background. I mean, it's just an iconic car. Why, why this car out of all the cars in the world? Well, we've, uh, we've met uh, Gordon Burek, the designer of this. In fact, he came to Aurora for a Aurora University car show. And uh, he did this back when he was only in his mid-20s. He designed many other cars, but this is the one he's best known for. And uh, a lot of people are familiar with the Ford that has the uh, side pipes, the chrome pipes going mm -hmm. into the fender. That was really the second vintage. Uh, Jurg designed this original clean one in 36. Let's keep backing up just so we can get the full side of the car. In 37, they added a supercharger to some of the models, and they really needed to get engine heat out of there. It was so crowded under that hood. So the side pipes were offshoot of that. That's One the, of the things that Gehrig was known for is the number of I'm new... I'm going to take a step over here. Keep going. New features. Tell me about the new this, features on this car. This car, starting here at the back, first car with a, a license plate light. Ah. Uh, first car that ever had a gas cap uh, underneath a door, a locking wow. gas cap and door. Um, first production car without running boards. And I noticed when the top goes down, this lid lives up and the top folds into it and the metal lid comes down. Completely, Completely unseen. Right. Well, the first car with headlights that disappeared into the fender. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have you open the door. That's What about the suicide door thing? Is that the first time there's been a suicide? No. <laughs> okay. That was not uncommon, but the... Let's take a look at that door. People notice on the interior is the lack of a big gear shift. What is this right here? Glove compartment on both sides, and the handle next to it is what you crank to open the windows. This little handle. Okay, that little the, handle. That opens the headlight doors. Oh, headlight doors. The uh, instrument panel has, among other things, a button you can push to get the level of fuel in the gas tank, and you push the button again, and it's the level of oil in the crankcase. Oh, really? Uh, of course, it's got a tachometer as well as a speedometer. And the tach is very, that's very advanced at that point, too. And the uh, gear shift is just a little pre-selector of the steering column. The room back there. Go ahead, yeah. And you select one of four forward speeds or reverse, but it doesn't shift gears at that point. It shifts gears when you push the clutch down. Oh. So if you're cruising in fourth gear and you put the sh shift into third, it acts as a passing gear. Push it down and downshift. And what, what is this? That's emergency brake. Emergency brake. Okay. And uh, let's take a look under the hood. Is that a difficult challenge or is that easy to do? It's a Lycoming engine. Cord owned the Lycoming motors as well. Made aircraft engines. It's uh, the first time an Auburn or Cord or a Duesenberg had a, a V8. They had straight inline eights. So this particular body style it required a shorter engine. And so it's a Lycoming V8, about 125 horsepower. So it's an airplane engine. Well, it's probably a little heavy for an airplane. Yeah, but but the same people it, were big in sure, airplanes. Yeah, it sure engines. looks like, like that from back in that time. And it's a front-wheel drive. Well, being as it's front-wheel drive, that's why that unusual gear shift mechanism. Okay. The electrical switches control this system here, which is a vacuum tank. Another vacuum tank goes at right angles. And the electrical solenoids get the signal that pushes a piston in or out or sideways. 
The transmission is directly under this cover. Okay. And the differential, because it's a front wheel drive, is right under the radiator. Wow. So the transmission is driven up and it drives back to the axle. That's fantastic. Let's shut the hood and let's have you stand Terry next to your car. Terry, thanks for being on my car story. Thank you for having me.